Well, the audience can expect pure, pure dance, and there's no real story, but with Robin's pieces on the program, there is an inner story, meaning if you look at glass pieces, there's an urban um, feel to it. It's a big city feel to it, like uh, in New York. People are walking, people are moving about, and then the last movement is very much a group ensemble piece with the corps de ballet, and it's tribal, very tribal. With the concert, that's a little bit of a story because it, you will see yourself on stage going to, let's say, the opera or recital, and you see these characters that come on the stage one at a time and kind of introduce themselves, that you will see yourselves and you'll know you've experienced someone going, shh, when you hear rattling of a paper or someone's opening a candy or someone making too much noise. You get all these different types that come to the theater that could be wealthy, that could be just very simple people, you know, people that save up a lot of money to go. So, and some people that, and then they lose their, they lose their, they go into a fantasy world by Chopin, by listening to the music and the pianist. It's a very funny ballet. Um, and then uh, with Suite of Dancers, it's a solo with a cellist. Um, and it's almost like the audience is not there. They're in their, in let's say a rehearsal studio and the music is playing and, and he is improvising, you know, in the first movement. So there's three different textures and colors of, of this, this piece. It's in four variations, four different sections. And then there's um, Duo Concertant, which Balanchine created in 1972 at the Stravinsky Festival, which I was fortunate enough to see at the premiere. Actually, I've seen all these ballets at the premiere, except for the concert. That I did not. I danced it, but I did not. Um, but Duo Concertant is, is just, it's about the music because when you, the curtain goes up, you have two dancers behind the piano listening to the, the violinist and the pianist. And then they start to join them in a dance. So, and there's an interaction between the couple and the musicians that is very, uh, it's very sophisticated, but, but again, uh, very touching, um, and you can see the relationship between the man and woman, and also in regards to the to the mu musicians. And um, it's it's. I think you you will go, come away from this program very fulfilled, seeing. It. And if you don't like what you see, as Balanchine used to say, close your eyes and listen to the music. You had these two creative geniuses working side by side. And Robbins was worked very differently than Balanchine, but at the same time, they would complement each other. And it was all about the passion and the work and being involved in the creativity of the 1972 Stravinsky Festival. That was fabulous because Balanchine and Robbins would go into these little studios sometimes and create these amazing pieces that have lasted. And Duo Concertone is one of them that came. And later on in the season for you, you'll have Symphony in Three Movements which is another one that um, is quite, came out of the Stravinsky Festival. But it was very different. It was, we did it because we wanted to be there. We wanted to be working with Robbins and, and Balanchine. And it was very, uh, it was very exciting. It was very important for him to feel comfortable and also to trust the dancer and be very open to what he has to say and his, his movement. Because you have to, when you work with Robbins, you have to put your ego aside and you come in and you just create and you're the instrument. You know, he kind of dances around the room and you have to watch him and follow him. But um, for him, what really was important, what he used to say to the dancers, Mr. Robbins, that is, is to, who are you dancing with? Dance for each other. Don't dance to the audience. You look at each other when you're dancing with each other. And in a funny way, he would create these communities on stage that you felt as an audience member that you were watching something very special and you were like a fly on the wall. 
a lot of Robbins's works is based in theater. Like if you watch the concert, it's based in theater. It's, it's like taking, when you rehearse with him, it's like taking an acting lesson to question, answer, and, you ha and, and to not over perform it, not overact it, to make it, what, what, what's funny is the situations, he used to say. You don't make the situations funny, it's you being in the situation that makes it funny. For staging Robbins pieces, or even if it's balance sheet, but for Robbins in particular, what I look for is to be true to the choreographer uh, and to try to get the, the dancers to understand the essence of the piece. So the, the piece has the look of what Robbins wanted. And you sometimes, like I said, you, in that process, sometimes it takes time because when you don't understand Robbins, as a dancer, and you're doing it for the first time, it is, it, it takes time for you to understand it. One of the hardest pieces to do in regards to Robin's ballet, when a company has never performed one of his ballets, is the concert. Because it's very meticulous, and it's very, very um, timing. The comedy is timing, you have to be very precise. And you have to be in the moment, and also, like I, like I said earlier with Robbins, you have to play the situation. Because if you, and, and make sure the timing, you can't take too long, because you lose your audience. So that is one in, thing in particular I do. Also, I, I try to have an open mind, because there are many versions of what he did because when I was traveling he would change things with other companies. So he would, um, I would call him up before I would leave when he was still alive and I would say, you know, what, what do you want me to do? Which version do you think I should do? For? He said, I trust you, do what version looks best for them. Because you wanted to make sure that the dancer looks good and feels comfortable at the same time. So it's, uh, I have the fortunate opportunity Opportunity to do these ballets, and to me, it's a privilege. But it's also um, I was when I heard those words from Robbins, it kind of solidified my practice on how to, to proceed. We're wearing masks in the studio. It's COVID still, and what's hard when you rehearse a ballet called like the concert because you have to see expressions, and you have, you have people with masks on. It's kind of hard to to understand or comprehend what what is going on but I find the dancers are very passionate to working I remember a lot of them from the last time I was here so and Jean Christophe who's the ballet master here who has worked with me in the past I feel very much at home coming coming here uh, plus my wife has worked here too so uh, I feel there's a relationship that I don't feel I'm starting over. It's like coming to an old friend to visit for a little while. So, but, but with COVID, it's been a bit um, challenging, I have to say, very challenging, but I'm very happy that this program is finally happening.